transfers. A couple of the biggest questions that get answered are, why can't I buy this player for as little as this other team did? When I try to buy a player, they ask for $200 million, even though his value is much, much lower. All right, so in terms of a, of a player's actual value, which is here, their transfer value is determined by a bunch of different factors. Some of them you can't see. Their current ability, how they're currently performing, what uh, tournaments they're in, such as an under-18s tournament or things like that. You know, like that, That's why you should assign your own scouts. And don't go watching under-18s tournaments, because players who overachieve in tournaments, their, their transfer value gets artificially inflated. So it's not usually best to go watch those tournaments, although if you leave your scouting to your AI, they do. Um, their contract length has a huge factor on their transfer value. Uh, their team's reputation, as well as the player's reputation, and their current ability and potential ability differential. A lot of those things. All of those things factor into what their transfer value is. And the game has a formula for dictating that. Now, what their transfer value is to their team can be very different. You think about it this way. If it's your star player, somebody comes and bids a low ball offer on them. We'll get to why they do that soon. You're not going to want to go for it. I mean, you shouldn't just flat out reject it because that's how they unsettle your player. In fact, ask them for 400 million. Make the other team reject your counter because then the player sees it as, well, they didn't try hard enough. It actually helps you to get the other team to back out of a transfer than to just flat out reject it. So try to keep that in mind. And so that's where. We're going to start with a player comes across your scouting port. You know, and he looks like he's somebody you want to buy. A lot of people just go click make offer. This is your problem. This is exactly why they're, they're going to ask you for way too much money. You haven't done any of the due diligence that the AI does, right? One of the things you may do right away is approach the agent. This is good, okay? I'm interested. What's it going to take? So he's going to give you some numbers here of how interested the person is, what it's going to cost to buy him, and how much his wage demands are going to be. Right? And if it looks good to you, you say, okay. Between 5.2 and 6.6 .6 is what he says. Which is in line with what his transfer value is. Now, having said that, if I just click make offer, the team's going to ask probably for a lot more than that. Potentially, anyhow, depending. And if, I, if I look here, he only has one year left on his contract. So there's a chance to let him go at that range, but if they've decided that they want to keep him long-term, he's a star player, what have you, they're probably going to ask for a lot more money because they don't want him to leave. Check out their contract expiry dates. If you're going after a guy who has you know four or five years left on his contract, there's a really low chance they're going to want to sell him. There's a reason they offer new contracts to them consistently because it inflates their value. But let's just say for sake of argument, we want to go after a player anyway. All right, let's do what the AI does. They have no advantage over us. So here's what you do first. The first thing you're going to want to do here is approach the agent as we did. Then we're going to assign him to our shortlist. I've already done that in this case. As soon as you assign them to your shortlist, you're going to declare interest. Okay, I'm declaring interest in him. Got it? I have now officially declared interest in this player, the player I admire. Okay, the player is going to hear about that. And he's going to think, oh, that's cool. This guy really wants me. All right. After that, I'm going to assign a scout. Right? I'm literally going to go ahead and assign chief scout for three months to watch this guy. Right? You can assign your assistant manager. You can assign anybody. But the point is, every once in a while, you'll be playing along, and it'll say, so-and-so has attended your match to watch this player that he's interested in. That unsettles that player, okay? And it's the, then that brings me to the next step, which is if you can and you can afford the time, attend that player's matches yourself. They will get the same news item for their team. That player will know that you're watching him. This will make him want to sign with you, okay? And once, once a player wants to be on your team, the team that he's on has to give, they have to budge on how much money they're asking for. The next thing you do is what the AI does to you. Opal. I'm going to go in here and they, they want 5.2 to 6.6. .6. Well, shit. 
I'm going to go ahead and offer you two and a half million. Suggest it, right? They're going to come back with this. Uh, why did I bother to even talk to these people? I'll offer you that, and it's going to be it's going to be non-negotiable, right? Because they do that to you all the time. Make this offer non-negotiable. They're going to reject it. But that player. After all the other things I've done, especially if I had simmed ahead a little bit and the scouts are watching him and he knows about my interest, I'm doing this all for the sake of showing it to you all at once. That player is going to come back to them and do what he, what more of your players did to you. They're going to say, well, why didn't you accept the bid? I want to go to that team. Especially if your reputation is bigger than that other team. They don't really get much of a choice in the matter. So when I move forward, they're going to reject that bid, but that player is going to put pressure on them to accept the bid. So those are the steps. And eventually they're going to accept a much lower amount for that player, especially if their contract runs down further. Plus they're going to be upset, those players, and they're going to do the same thing to the AI that they do to you when they're upset. They're not going to renew their contract. So they're only going to get cheaper and cheaper. Playing the long waiting game is how you get players on the cheap. It's what the opponents do to you, and it's why they're buying players for less than you are. Which brings me around to selling players. Why can't I sell so-and-so? You know, I transfer listed him, but everybody's offering me far, far less than he's worth. Well, you know why they're offering less than he's worth? Because they're trying to unsettle him. Having said all of that, if you want to sell the player, the first thing that you should be doing is setting a transfer value, right? You don't have to put an amount in there. You can just literally click right here on his transfer value. Look at that. Automatically puts it in. It puts in the, the smallest amount, but it automatically fills this in for you if you just click it. Neat trick, huh? And then I can just hit, you know, I actually want it to be more than this. We're going to go with 100,000. 100, no, it's going to tell you underneath if the client would be okay with that, okay? Would not be okay with the asking price of set. Let's persuade him. Let's try to get him. Say, oh, see, he wants a little work, 90k. I can handle that. Oh, okay, cool. Now his transfer value is going to be 90k. I've discussed the issue with Butcher. Perfectly okay with this. It looks like I put 95. Confirm. There. His transfer value was set. Now, if a team comes after him and offers me less than that, I'm just simply going to say no. Flat out, no. And if he comes back and says, why didn't you accept the bid? It's like, because they didn't offer what we agreed to. And eventually teams will offer <laughs> what you've agreed to. The only way that this is going to change is after enough time. If his contract starts to tick down, which his is, ends at the end of the season here. <laughs> so it was a pointless exercise that I did with him. But it's not the point. That's why I did it with him. Because I already know he's leaving. But as his contract ticks down, his value will lower. So you're going to go in here and you can check the transfer status. And you can see I've set his transfer value here, but his guide value, which is the game's value, is here. Those are two different things. And if this starts to lower, then I may want to adjust this one. But if I hold out long enough with a player that's valuable enough, eventually I'll get what I want for him. And here's the key elements to doing that. After you set the asking price, you be patient. I said that part. Longer contracts help. This team's target players with shorter contracts. If you ever notice, a lot of the players they're going after on your team only have two or three seasons left, sometimes just one. Those are the players they're targeting because their values are artificially deflated by their shorter contracts. And then the biggest one possible, it's not always easy to do, try to play that player. Because performance also inflates their value. Sitting on the bench and doing nothing, eventually their playing time, happiness, drops. And that will lower their value as well. So. Now that you've learned all of these things, you can understand how to buy players cheaper and how to sell players for more. If you have any questions regarding this, please let me know. Maybe I missed something. and I can always come back, redo this with more information, but I hope that helps.